So how do clinicians diagnose thrombocytosis? So the diagnosis is going to be by blood work. So a complete blood count, we can look at red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and we're going to see platelet count above 400 times 10 to the 9th per liter. Some labs may have different numbers, but this is going to be a typical threshold. But because thrombocytosis is itself often a sign of another condition, it's important to assess for other underlying causes. Along with that blood work, we may find some findings on the CBC. So it's also important to do iron studies to look for iron deficiency anemia. This can be a very important cause of an increased level of platelets. Iron deficiency anemia is so common that this is important to look out for. It's important to measure acute phase reactants as well. So ESR, CRP, there may be some systemic inflammation that's also leading to an elevation in thrombocytes or platelets. And bone marrow biopsy may be necessary in patients who are suspected of having some malignancy, CML for instance. And what do we do with high platelets? So it's important to distinguish whether or not this is going to be secondary thrombocytosis or primary. With regards to secondary thrombocytosis, it's going to be important to treat the underlying cause. So whatever the underlying cause is, treat that. And then the high platelet level will eventually resolve. With regards to primary thrombocytosis, depending on which cause it is, if it is CML, patients will have to be on a chemotherapy. If it's one of those other causes we mentioned before, like essential thrombocythemia, we may have to use ASA or aspirin, hydroxyurea or interferon alpha or anagrilide. And then in more severe cases, platelet phoresis may be employed. So again, it's important to distinguish between primary and secondary thrombocytosis, looking out for those underlying causes. Once we figure that out, then we can move on with treatments.